In today's video, we'll first take a look at a website that was fully built using pixels. Then we're gonna cover two really great responsive units that you can use to actually convert websites to be responsive. And then we're gonna see what we can do with the original website that we built using those responsive measurements. Now let's get into it. So this is our design here in Webflow and everything you see in front of you is made up of pixels. Now our design here, we can see what it's actually made up of using the left side here, using the navigator, we can see what the layers actually have inside of them. So we have our hero section here, which is 1280 width in pixels. We have 140 in padding, and this is all pixels by the way, and 900 height in pixels. And then we've got the nav bar, a content wrapper, which then holds the text wrapper, and the text wrapper then holds a heading, some paragraph, and some buttons in here, which is also part of a wrapper. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna take this design and we're gonna showcase how we can actually transform it so that we can then scale it properly along all the breakpoints so that we don't get this kind of weird clipping going on. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into the design and we can see the first thing that we would do and that we should do to make this responsive is to change the width of the section to be responsive for all breakpoints. Now, the best measurement that you can use for larger components like sections, like large divs, things like that, is gonna be viewport width. Now, viewport width allows you to span a measurement alongside the horizontal size of a viewport. So in this case, we want it to be 100% of the viewport width. So we can see that we now want it to scale the entirety of the width of the viewport and just by doing that, we can see that we've already fixed a big chunk of the design here. Now, the next thing I would do here is would be to change the padding. So we see that we have 140 in pixels, but maybe we want to use viewport width for this as well. One easy way to go about this is just to simply put in 10 viewport width on both sides. And we can see what that looks like. And we can see that the design moved a little bit. So we can just eyeball it for this design and we can then put 11 VW. And we can see that now, regardless of the design, it is moving in according to 11 VW, 11% 11 of the viewport width. If you imagine it as a percentage, things are a lot easier. So we could also have put 11% here, but for this case, we're gonna use viewport width. So then we've got the text and the actual divs that hold the text. So we've got the content wrapper here. We've got also the height of the section, which we'll get into later. We've got the content wrapper. We've got the text wrapper and then the button wrapper. So the button wrappers doesn't have any measurements in it, so we're gonna leave it, but it has two buttons, which then has pixels. So we can go into that in a little bit. But first, let's take a look at the height of the section here. So the height is 900 pixels flat. It's static and this is not good because it's not accessible to other breakpoints. So what we can do in this case, if we want it to scale alongside our breakpoints, is we can type in something like 80 viewport width, just like that. And we can see that it then scales alongside our viewport just like that. But we see that this is scaling a little bit too much. It's, it looks a little bit weird in the other viewpoints. So maybe we can change this to something like 60 or 70. So that's looking a little bit better for me in this case. But we see that now there's a problem with the actual wrapper that holds the text and the content wrapper. So this is still, using static units of measurements like pixels. So we can then change this to be maybe 100% of the height. So we can then change this from 800 pixels to something like 80%, something like that. And then the, con the text wrapper itself, we can then change it to be, so if we don't want it to be 550 in pixels so that we keep it on a kind of a short side for the text so that it's legible, we can then maybe change this to be 50% or maybe 60% in this case. So it can be easily legible on all breakpoints. And we can see that if we just start to scale this, we can see that on the larger breakpoints, this doesn't really work very well. So maybe instead of 60%, we can use something on the larger breakpoints like 40%. And that's starting to look a little bit better. And we can see that there's still a pretty big issue here, which is gonna be the section. So the section, we can then do something like 90 viewport height, just like that. And what that does is it takes into account the height of the actual viewport, and it changes the height to be 90% of the full height. So we can see that that looks a little bit more like a tablet view, and now all the way down to mobile, is starting to look a little bit better, but there's still this issue here. 
So we can then go into our tablet and maybe we don't need this to be on the left side anymore. Maybe we can do 100% and we can then change this to be for all H1 headings, change this to be centered view so that it does make sense on mobile landscapes to be centered just like this. Go into vertical here, just like that. So that's starting to make a little bit more sense. Now, text pixel sizes in this case is 56 pixels and 1.2 relative to the actual size of the pixels. So 120% height multiplied by 56. Now, in this case, we want it to be REMs. Now, REMs is gonna allow your design to scale alongside everything that you do. So it's gonna be based on the root element of your breakpoint. And in most cases, that root element is 16 pixels. So if you want a design to scale properly, especially text, I recommend that you use the exact same font size that you already have and type in the following, divided by 16 REM. And that will automatically change it to be the relative unit that can scale properly. So we're gonna do the same thing for all the text here, the paragraphs, Go into all body. So we can just do one REM because we know that 16 pixels equals one REM. And we can do the same thing for the buttons here. So we can do divided by 16 REM. And we're just gonna copy that value just like that. And we can see that things are starting to be a bit more responsive here. So if I start to move this up and down, you can see that things are starting to make a little bit more sense. But in this case, I do feel like this design looks a little bit too big here. So maybe instead of 70 viewport width, we wanna change it to be maybe something like 70 height, something like that. So we can then move this up and down. So in this case, it, I think it's up to the designer, whatever kind of look you want to do, but we can always go VWs and then here, just move it down to 60, something like that. So that all the way up, it looks a little bit smaller, but then going down. So in this case, what we've done is we've taken a design that was fully built using pixels. And here is what that looked like. And now we have applied responsive units of measurements, which we can use to make our designs more scalable, just like we have just done here. Now, lastly, what we would need to do is to design in this nav bar here. But I think for the purpose of this video to showcase how we can use VWs, how we can use REMs, things like that, this is far, far enough. Now, lastly, one of the things that we do need to do is to convert the spacing that we see here. So we've, we've got 32 pixels. 32 pixels, and then we've got 30 or 16 pixels horizontally. So what we can do here, again, we'll go into the all H1 tags and just do the same thing. We'll just convert this to REMs using divided by 16 REMs. And we can see that that is now two REMs. So the height of it is also going to scale up and down depending on the viewport that we're at. And we can do the exact same thing for all paragraphs. So we already know that it's two REM, so we can just go ahead and convert that. And we'll do the same thing for the buttons. We already know that's one REM. So now all the buttons have one REM for the separation. Same thing here. Let's go into divided by 16 REM. So now we can see that we have the design that scales pretty well here. And once we go into mobile, we see that the buttons should start to scale a little bit better and also be on top of each other and not right next to each other. So what we can do once we get to a certain point, like mobile here is gonna be, we can make this vertical instead and the buttons, we can get rid of the spacing on the left and right side, just like that. And we can make the width 100%. Let me go into the, just like that. Go ahead and make that centered. And we're gonna add two REMs, the bottom spacing, maybe one. And that does look a little bit more like what we would usually see for mobile designs. So now we have this design here and it looks decent on mobile, 
on all the breakpoints. So we can go ahead and even consider publishing this because the design fully scales compared to what we usually had using only pixels. So now that we know how to do this using VWs, using REMs, this is fully applicable to any type of design that you're going to build in Webflow. It doesn't matter if you're designing for a marketplace, for a blog, for a CMS, it doesn't really matter as long as you use relative and responsive measurements, your design can scale up and down depending on the breakpoints. If you guys did enjoy this video, if you guys learned anything at all, do let us know down below and follow for more Flux videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.